It's the last stand. And here is your host, Brian Custer. That's right. It is the last stand. We bring you the biggest names in the sport. When you talk about the welterweight division, this guy is at the top. He is the unified welterweight champion of the world. The big fish. Man down. The truth. Which one do you identify with more? Oh, I love strap season. <laughs> yeah, line them up. You got a lot of them, don't you now? Put them in the dirt. <laughs> Put them in the, that's the, probably the best. <laughs> Put them in the dirt is the best one. Errol Spence Jr. back with us, man. So it's here. I mean, this is this, uh, we've been talking about this a long time. Hey, I, I remember back in your gym, that hot gym you had in Dallas, and we were talking about fighting. Ter- now that it's here, wh- wh- what's it like? What do you feel like? Is it like, yeah, this is my time? Uh, definitely, definitely my time. I, f- <clears throat> I feel like this, what I've been dreaming about since the amateur days when I was a kid, like I said, watching those, you know, documentaries of, you know, Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns and Marvin Hagler and Tommy Hearns, just seeing the lead up and, you know, seeing, you know, how mean they was in the ring and just, you know, watching it like, man, I want to be like them, like them are true gladiators. And, you know, I finally have my opportunity where I can put on the show and, you know, put on a great performance and, you know, be like that. And somebody have a documentary of me in the lead up to the fights. And, you know, and I got a kid 30, 40 years from now, like, he's an amateur and he's watching the fight and he's a pro now. And he's like, man, I want to have a fight like Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford. Or, like, that's that's going to be a great moment. Yeah, at your name in the history books. You know, at the press conference, I, I, I thought it was interesting, Bud Crawford said, I, I'm happy that I helped inch this thing over the finish line and get it done. It, what do you think, what was the tipping point to finally getting it done? Because I know you went through a lot yeah. to get this fight. What do you think, in your opinion, what, what got it over the finish line? Uh, I feel like it was basically me putting, you know, making concessions that, you know, that people thought I wasn't going to make and, you know, basically giving him stuff that, you know, that the business people feel like he didn't need. Or he didn't deserve, and you know I wanted to make the fight happen, so I like give it to him. Mm-hmm. So, uh, do you? What do you think a victory over Bud Crawford does for Errol Spence Jr.'s legacy? Um, I feel like that type of victory, you know, does a lot for my legacy. Um, I feel like it makes me the great, the best fighter in not only in the welterweight division, but makes me the best fighter in boxing. Period, and. Um, I feel like a victory knowing how Terrence Crawford temp- temperament is and and knowing how, you know, when you push him, he's going to push harder. You know, just having to break him, you know, I feel like that's going to be legendary. And, you know, I, I feel like how stubborn he is, he going to want a rematch. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it'll probably be two fights. It's probably both at 147 or do you, the second one you think at 154? Uh, I don't know. We'll see when the times come. Yeah. When the time comes, uh, you, you know, people so anticipate this fight. You know, it's been so anticipated. It was kind of like Mayweather Pacquiao. A lot of people came away with Mayweather Pacquiao, like, uh, it was, it was great. It, it just didn't have any action. How, how can you guarantee that these people, they won't be disappointed when you two get into the ring? Um, just if you look at the previous fights and just look at our temperaments, um, you see somebody try to push me or somebody fight harder, I fight harder, you know. And you look at him, you see if somebody try to push him or they try to fight harder, he start fighting harder. And, um, you know, he has pushback, I have pushback. And that's just a recipe for a great fight, um, exciting fight, and for us to put on a great show. We both want to be in the history books. We both want to, you know, have a great fight. And um, I just feel like for us, you putting us two us together is like, you know, putting, you know, two pits in a, in a cage together and the two fighting pit bulls. And, um, you know, they both smell blood. You know, they both got a wound. And, um, you know, it's either the only way to get out the cage is somebody got to die. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that's going to be both our mentalities come fight night. Does it ever, did it ever bother you, EJ, that when you looked at, even now, the pound-for-pound pound rankings, if it always had Bud Crawford, like, number one, Errol Spence, four, what have you. You're the unified champ. You got three of the belts. Yeah. Uh, even going into this fight, he's a slight favorite. Did any of that, did it, when you hear that, did it ever motivate you or upset you at all? 
Uh, nah, I don't really, I don't really pay too much attention to that, into that type of stuff. Um, I know after I win this fight, you know, I'll be the best, you know, fighter in the world. And, you know, to, you know, I can see why, you know, he is the favorite, just, just, you know, common sense. You know, I'm realistic, all the stuff that I've been through, you know, just the stuff that people know about I've been through, you know, you know, I will, you know, pick him the favorite too, mm-hmm. you know. So, uh, you know, stuff happened and, um, you know, but I keep defying the odds, you know. They, everybody thought I was going to be a shell of myself as I came back from the car, cri- car crash. And, uh, you know, I came back and, you know, been doing my thing ever since. Die injury, came back and been doing myself ever since. So, you know, I keep defying the eyes so people can see, keep saying what they saying and keep talking negative, but they don't know, you know, that's really just added motivation. Yeah. And hey, listen, in this sport of boxing, you know this, sometimes you got to go through some stuff. Because that's what you rely on when you get in those hard times in a fight. And if you've never gone through something, that's when sometimes those hard fights become a loss for you. Yeah, that's not only in the sport of boxing. That's life. That's life. That, that is life, Errol <laughs> Spence. Life. You you're got, right. You got to go through something. You got, you're right about that. You're going to be tried. Uh, there's some people who say, man, his versatility, his counterpunching, his athleticism would be too much for Errol Spence. What do you say to that? Say, oh, that's good, man. Oh, that's great. But, you know what I'm saying, like, with me and my style, none of that gets to me. I feel like my skill set, you know, my ability, and, you know, I just keep coming. And, you know, not only just coming, you know, I'm a guy that can change it up. You know, I'm a guy that can do different things. I didn't become, you know, Olympian. I didn't just be all these great amateur guys or pro guys by just having just one attribute, just come forward, throw punches, and, you know, just be able to take a punch, you know. I'm a guy who can shift it up, do different things, have defense. You know, I can switch back from offense to defense, you know. I can break a guy down, I can box too. You know, I just do things suddenly. I don't feel like necessary that I got to move and, you know, do all the different things that they do. I feel like... That wastes more energy. I ain't got time to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, you got it now. You're stable. I mean, you've got so many guys now. Anthony Joshua and Ryan Garcia. What, what has that been like now that those guys have joined? The uh, I mean, it's cool. Uh, Ryan came for a couple of days, I guess, you know, just to fill out the yeah. gym. Anthony Joshua, he'd been there training, um, you know, full time. And, um, you know, usually I train like 8, 9 in the morning, yeah. you know, before the sun come up. So, you know, we'll see each other in passing, but me and Anthony, you know, we talk. You know, when Ryan came, you know, we talked in passing and stuff like that. So, with everybody, you know, Frank in the gym, you know, me and Frank, we talk a lot. We do strength conditioning together. So, you know, it's great just to have other great fighters in the gym because it makes you, you know, stay on point, especially, you know, in sparring and knowing, you know, they watching you. So, you know, you're trying to work a little harder. Hey, everybody, I'm Brian Custer. Our next partner... Athletic Greens. You know, I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. You think I got like this overnight? No, it's because of AG1. And I wanted to try it because I wanted better gut health, increased energy, immune system support. I take AG1 in the morning before starting my day, and it really makes me feel like I'm doing something good for my body, like covering all my nutritional bases. And it's great before your workouts. It's made with 75 super high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced ingredients that deliver benefits like mood, immune system, and sleep support, sustained energy, and really so much more. You know, really quickly, I noticed that it helps me with improved digestion, and I feel great, and it helps support my sleep. I like that AG1 is delivered monthly, so I don't even have to think about it. So if you want to take ownership of your health, Today is a good time to start. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five travel packs to go with your first purchase. All you've got to do, go to athleticgreens.com slash last stand. That's athleticgreens.com slash last stand. And check it out. Uh, What's the next big fight for you, you think? Yeah, 154. I mean, I, I, Bud Crawford was on here, and he said, hey, look, I want Charlo after Spence. 
Mm-hmm. I want spent and I want to try. I remember you saying, hey, if the money's right, you never know. Because yeah. you, you want to go to 154 after this. Yeah. W- w- what's the next big fight for you, you think? Um, I really don't know. Um, I'm not even thinking about the next fight, to yeah. tell you the truth, man. For me, I, I'm living a blessed life, man. I got a great opportunity, man. You know, I'm able to take care of my kids and, you know, do the great things out of life. So, for me, it's just about, you know, after this, I'm spending time with my family, yeah. you know, taking my kids to Disney World and, you know, just enjoying the fruit of my labor the right way, the right way I'm supposed to. And that's, you know, being with my family and taking my dad. His dream is to go to Africa, so I'm taking my dad. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm taking my dad to Africa and uh, take my mom somewhere and just... Spend time with my family and just enjoy the fruit of my labor with my family, the people who've been with, there with me since day one. All right. So we come to the last section of, of the last in. You know the drill. I got to ask you a series of questions. Give me the first thing that comes to your mind. You ready? Yeah. Who is the biggest threat to the 147-pound division? You know, obviously you guys are at the top, but in the future. Is it Boots Ennis? Is it Virgil Ortiz? I would, I would say... I mean, I would say both. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Virgil, a Texas boy. Mm-hmm. You know, he's very tough. He's a guy that's, you know, going to fight, give it his all, you know. I wish him the best through his, um, I know he had a mm-hmm. condition or whatever, mm-hmm. so I wish him the best through that. But Jaron Ennis, he nasty too. Mm-hmm. You know, very skilled, very talented, you know. Look like he's super hungry and yeah. dedicated, you know. So they both going to be a, 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 a force to reckon with. Uh, more realistic fight for you in the future. Boots Ennis or Jamel Charlo? Who are paying the most? <laughs> I, love, I love it. I love My it. My kids go to private school. Yeah, I yeah, hear you. I hear you. Hey, man. I love it. I love it. Uh, which one do you identify with more? The truth, big fish, man down? The truth. The truth. Got it? Uh, what did you think when Roly Romero came here on the last day and said he is coming for Errol Spence at 147? And going to take you out. He a nut. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to lose that old man. So, <laughs> you, need a rem- <laughs> you need a rematch him, man. <laughs> hey, man, it looked too good, man. <laughs> the ref really helped him out, man. They did it. They ate it, man. And that ref usually, he's good. He's yeah. a good ref, but... <laughs> That old man was on his ass. He was. <laughs> <laughs> he was on his ass. I was like, man, he gonna lose to somebody, grandfather, man. Oh my god! god. Yeah, I was like, he gonna lose somebody, grandfather, oh my god. man. Oh. He dropped him and everything. I say, I, I was felt like he in trouble. <laughs> oh my god, I'm always ready for that. Is Frank Martin? Because that's your fighter. Yeah. You think he's ready for Tank Davis? Uh, yeah. Frank definitely ready. He ready for everybody in the 135 division. Um, super focused, you know, super dedicated. You know, I just, you know, I just send him text messages all the time. Just tell him stay focused. Yeah. You right there, man. You know, stay hungry. Just make sure you stay, stay the course, man, because it's there. And um, opportunities like this don't last forever. So just stay the course, stay focused. But he, he's, there, he's definitely ready for everybody. Last but not least. Do you think we can get a rematch? One, just one round this time. But you can't throw no more punches up in here, man. That uh, was not fair, bro. Bro. Hey, man. For you almost brought that, that, that cavity that I had up here in my hey, chest. Hey, man. It's, it's either that or the head. So, <laughs> so you got to choose, man. <laughs> that is my guy. Errol Spence Jr., the unified welterweight champion of the world. Will we be the undisputed heavyweight or welterweight champion of the world next time we speak? Oh, definitely. Undisputed Westway Chairman of the World, the first ever, man. That's fantastic. EJ, I always appreciate you. Thank you. That's what we do here on The Last Stand. We bring the biggest names in the sport, and I tell you what, it gets no bigger than this guy right here, Errol Spence Jr. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again next week.